Every month, online security expert and solar eclipse expert David Papp joins us with the latest in technology for you and your family. He joins us this morning to talk about going back to school as well as the upcoming solar eclipse. You've done your research here. I have. You're online. 23 hours and 59 minutes every day, you get one minute of sleep. I'm very, very impressed. You're tweeting all the time. Uh, solar eclipse, uh, tell us everything we need to know about this event that doesn't happen very often. No, it doesn't, Mike. Actually, the last one was in 1979 across North America. I mean, it happens, you know, throughout the years around the world. And uh, this one's a total solar eclipse that's uh, going through the U.S. So from Edmonton, it is going to be probably a 75% partial eclipse is what you're going to see. It's this Monday, August 21st, and it's going to be from approximately 10.30 until 12.30, and it's peaking at 11.35. So you're going to be able to go outside and see something pretty cool. With 75% with of it occurring, if we're getting that 75% coverage, it should get pretty dark then. It should, absolutely, and the temperature should drop somewhat. It's pretty cool. Let's effect. hope that it's a sunny day, though. I mean, yeah. you know, with a cloudy day, it kind of destroys the whole thing. But yeah. There's the line where you're going to see 100%, right, if Correct. you're along that line. So if you're really serious, you can go yeah. travel down to Casper, Wyoming for the day. Big parties. They call it the line of totality. And Nashville, seriously. too. Wow, yeah. that could be a real party down yeah, there, too. Absolutely. Yeehaw. <laughs> yeah. So what's the best way to look at this thing? Well, uh, they say don't use binoculars don't use telescopes the big thing is to have solar glasses um, if you not want to, just regular sunglasses not either. just regular that's not good enough actually uh, when I put on solar glasses I can't see anything at all it's pitch black they're they're mirror and so when you're doing that you want to make sure that you're very careful when you're looking at the Sun you don't want to burn out your retina okay now uh, I know many of the people who watch our show send me pictures on a regular basis I know they're gonna be out there to try to take pictures of whatever they can see here yep. what is the proper and safest way to photograph a, a solar eclipse well, if you do use your smartphone, which most people will, you're going to typically have that starburst effect on the sun, and you're not going to see that much. So the best is if, uh, I mean, this is the poor man's version of doing it, but <laughs> you could hold up sunglasses or even better solar glasses in front of your camera and shoot through that. It actually does kind of work. Does it? Yeah. Um, the other thing is to make sure that when you go on your smartphone that you tap on the area to focus, because there's going to be a focusing issue. And the big thing is turn your flash off. Off. Do not have your flash go off. <laughs> Better yet, you'll have a good camera like the real serious photographers. They have filters and they. Yeah, uh, and those, uh, what you do is you have a solar filter on it and you want to make sure that you're taking your photographs at different exposure levels because different effects come out at the different times that, you, that you're exposing the sun that you're, you know, for your photograph. Okay, that's probably all we need to know for now about solar eclipse. We have yeah. a, a little time left and maybe we'll do this in greater depth in subsequent weeks, but uh, back to school approaching quicker than many would like. Yeah. Some are back to school right now we talked about that yesterday what about uh, technology that might be new and innovative for uh, kids and university students heading back to school this year well uh, generally everybody's got you know smartphone tablets and then of course laptops so you uh, one neat thing for schools they're rolling out is the Chromebooks they're the reason Chromebooks are pretty good is they're single purpose. They, they work, they don't get infected. You can't install games on them for your kids. <laughs> they might be disappointed in that. <laughs> um, the other thing that's really popular now, Mike, are they called two-in-one laptops. And two-in-ones are a laptop that also has a touch screen on it and acts as a tablet. In fact, sometimes you can remove the screen and use it separately and independent of the laptop keyboard portion. So those are again, and, and they're saying, when should I buy? Now's the time. To be honest, it's the back to school sales. Uh, the prices are really good if you feel that you need something. One, one thing I noticed though was at the store, I think I was at Costco the other day and I saw a whole bunch of these the scientific calculators, which I used to buy for my kids when they were in high school yep. many years ago. But I thought in this day and age, maybe you wouldn't need those anymore, that it'll all be built into your phone There's or your apps. computer. Or, yeah, absolutely. Do you need those anymore? Uh, well, the interesting thing there is some exams don't allow you oh, to bring in your laptop or your true. phone. That's true, that's true, that's <laughs> true. Okay. Because you could be, uh, you know, using Google. Okay, so, uh, that just, so you better get one of those if you yeah. need them. Don't rely on your phone or your, your app. Thank you so much. No Dave, we'll talk to you in the next little while. You can follow David on Twitter or check out his blog. There it is, at David Papp on Twitter. His blog is uh, davidpapp.com.